Hello and welcome back. Today we want to discuss about how to categorize uh, measurement systems. Yeah. Basically, basically, we can categorize them in different ways. One of these ways is the distinguish between direct and non-direct uh, measurements. Yeah. Direct measurement is very easy. This is my pen here. Yeah, you've seen it multiple times. I want to know the length. Okay, I want to know the length. So I take a scale with the same with the same thing you want to measure and compare. Yeah. And here I measure 100, 160, 167 millimeters. 167 millimeters is the length of this pen. Yeah? I've reached this by comparing length with length. And in this, at this length, there is a scale on it. So I know how much it is. I directly compare the measured value to the measured value to the same type of thing, length to length. Yeah? Often, we do use non-direct methods. Yeah. What does it mean, non-direct methods? I mean, I don't. I'm not sure if you already watched it or not. But there is another video of mine where we're using this thing here. Mm -hmm. This tiny, 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 tiny little thing. That's a so-called uh, thermistor. It changes its resistance value according to temperature. If it's getting hot, it's getting low resistance. If it's getting cold, it's getting high resistance. Okay. If I measure the resistance, I know how much temperature is in here. There are also these things here. Yeah. This is a photoresistor. This will change the resistor according to illumination. And here again, I measure the resistance of the thing and I know how bright is it there. Yeah. In both cases, I measure, I measure the resistance and I know different things. Yeah. So I do not really measure exactly the thing I'm interested in. I'm, re I'm measuring a helper, helper unit. Yeah. And this helping unit is somehow reliant or some there is some method of how some law of how this measured value this actually measured value is influenced by the thing i'm interested yeah? if this is known i can use the helping value the helping thing and i know exactly what here i know exactly what is the temperature and here i know exactly what is the brightness and non-direct, indirect things. Yeah? I'm measuring another thing. Okay. So that's one method on how to distinguish. Yeah? Another method is to distinguish between analog and digital cases. Yeah? These things here are analog. Yeah. I measure the resistance value and the resistance value is changing smoothly. It's not changing permanent yeah. in steps. It's changing smoothly. That's an analog method. One, so the, the value change is analog to the is analog to the to the value I want to measure. Yeah. One example is also uh, for measuring the speed uh, generator, Tacho generator. This means the more the more the more rotation speed I have, the more voltage I get out of the Tacho generator. This is a method on how I can measure speed of a shaft. Yeah. The shaft is turning. If I have a generator. Build here somehow, yeah. Then the more 
the shaft is turning, the more speed there is, yeah, the more voltage the generator will produce. Analog method. Yeah, and this I can use to measure the revs per minute or per second or whatever, the rotational speed of the shaft. I could also make a little dot here on my shaft, let it turn, and every time I see this dot I count. One, two, three, four, and so on. Yeah? I simply count, and I count for amount of time, and then I say, okay, I've counted now 10 seconds, I've seen five times the dot, so it must be, the rotational speed must be half a rotation per second. Yeah? 10 seconds, five dots, 10 divided, divided by five, is 0 0.5, a 2, 2, yeah. 5 divided, divided by 10 is 0 0.5, so I have, <laughs> so I have uh, uh, a half rotation per second. This time I was only counting, yeah. This was a digital method. If I'm only counting, it's a digital method. There is nothing analog to the rotational speed. Yeah. It's just a counter value. Digital method. Those things are also defer. Uh, I mean, here I could measure any time. Okay. Any time. So these this, these things, analog things, are usually uh, time continuous measurements. Yeah, I can. The measurement value is there regardless if I measure now or half a millisecond later. It's the, it's a new value. Yeah, it's time continuous. However, for instance, this digital method I just described. There, I only have the new measured value after a time. And only at this exact point in time, the measured value is valid. Yeah. Half a millisecond later, it might be different, but I don't know because I still have to count. Yeah. Such methods must not be necessarily uh, digital, but such methods where I do not know the value at each point in time are called time discrete methods. Okay. So it is to, to discrete points in time, I know their value. And between those times, I do not. Okay. So this is time continuous measurement and time discrete measurement. Third method on how to distinguish and how to distinguish things. Okay. And last but not least, uh, there is the deflection, deflection methods. This is if something is is changing. Yeah, this would be deflection method. Uh, a really, a real good example of deflection method. Yeah, is if you remember this one here. Yeah. This pier I draw. I said, okay, this is a manometer. Should show a manometer, please. Refer to the to the according video. If you don't see it, I mean, surprisingly, don't see it by this excellent drawing. <laughs> uh, this, so if the pressure is rising, this thing is moving, and the pointer is also moving. Okay, deflection method. However, in this case, the energy to move all those parts. Is coming directly from the process. So I am reducing the energy in the process. If the pressure is high enough or there's enough energy there, it's no issue. But I want to really measure tiny, 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 tiny little things, then this might be an issue that those types of, of, of things do not do not have the, the uh, Are not small enough, not 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 
empfindlich. Yeah? Sensitivity. The sensitivity is not given. Yeah? The sensitivity is not given just because I use too much energy out of the process. Yeah? This thing is called a uh, deflection method. Because yeah? moving. Yeah? There needs to be energy from the process. On the other hand, if I do not want to have this energy, I can compare, for instance, this pressure to another pressure. Or where, where it's very obvious that these things are uh, compared, it's the comparison method, is, I mean, everybody knows this sign. Scale. Okay. I put in here some weight. Yeah? I put in here the same weight. And I'm changing the weight here until it's leveled. Yeah? Comparison method. Yeah? I try to compensate the value I want to measure with the same size, with the same value, and bring it to zero. The big advantage here is that we do not that we do not take energy from this object. That's it. Yeah. However, the big disadvantage here is that it's much, much uh, slower. Yeah. If this is dynamically changing here, the weight, yeah, then I, I cannot finish. Yeah. It's also more expensive. So, advantage this one, it's simpler and it's a very straightforward approach. Yeah? But the, the sensitivity is not that high. That's the disadvantage. And, and maybe the linearity, maybe also, even the small, small things to measure the linearity is at deflection methods not that high. Here, the linearity is perfect. Yeah? It's very accurate. That's the, and it's don't consuming power from the process. Yeah, there is no energy taken from the process. There's the advantages. The disadvantages, it's slow and comparable expensive. Okay. Compensation method. So this this we do have. Yeah. Direct, direct methods, indirect methods to measure, analog, analog methods. Uh, with the generator, yeah? digital methods with the counting. Time discrete, uh, like counting here, time discrete measurements. Also here, this would be time discrete. Yeah? I only know the measured value if I have compensated it exactly, time discrete. Versus time continuous, that's the third one. And the fourth one was this deflection versus compensation. Okay, so, where to put it? Looks good. Here, perfect. Next time, we want to talk about uh, the static behavior of, of uh, measurement systems. Yeah. What this is will be covered in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.